Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Question Podcast. Today, I wanted to talk about something that's been looming in the air for quite a while now. If you're on TikTok or if you actively follow the news, by now you've probably heard of the TikTok ban. Today, I'm going to get into what this ban would potentially mean and if I think this is the right approach. So let me first start off by giving some background for some that may be unaware. TikTok is a popular social media app that has gained a huge amount of popularity over the last few years. To give you a little bit of context, TikTok gained about 100 million users in the U.S. alone just in 2020, in under two years after launching. So it took Facebook about four years to get to 100 million. And the argument can be made that when Facebook was kind of up and coming, smartphones weren't as big of a deal. But nonetheless, regardless, it shows just how quickly TikTok has entered the scene of social media and really become a top player. In fact, it's because of TikTok that short form content has really taken the world by storm and become what it is today and why competing platforms like Instagram and YouTube launched their respective TikToks, right, with their respective FYPs or For You pages with the launch of Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts, respectively. However, to be honest, even though they've created their own renditions or versions of the FYP page and the bite-sized content, the community that you experience on TikTok has yet to be replicated in my humble opinion. After parents, adults, aunts, and uncles, I say adults like I'm not myself an adult. What I mean to say is after parents, aunts, and uncles took over Facebook and Instagram turned into some kind of model runway, TikTok became a refuge for any and everyone who wanted to post about, well, anything without having to face the judgment of people that you knew. Because let's be honest, we all follow that one person from high school that we secretly can't stand. I, for example, started my account on TikTok back in 2021 and started posting stuff about tech. And I was too nervous to post this stuff on Instagram because of the people that followed me. Childhood friends, family members, I was worried that maybe they would think the content was too nerdy or Maybe they weren't interested. And so TikTok was the perfect place for me to kind of express this side of myself with low fear of judgment from the people that I kind of cared about. No one I knew was really on TikTok yet, so it was perfect. I had the freedom to kind of just be my nerdy, authentic self. And like me... This is also the story of many other users on TikTok, whether they wanted to showcase their dance moves or their quirky art or their frustration as they got ready for work. TikTok quickly became the space to do it. Even for those that weren't directly creating content, the FYP or For You page is groundbreaking in that it serves up content that you would be interested in. It's tailored specifically to you. My FYP page may not look like my coworkers or my sisters, and there's a bit of beauty and originality in that. I say all this to say that TikTok has become a place for people to authentically connect. It's one of the only apps where an A-list celebrity can have less followers than a mushroom scavenger. And to be honest, we kind of love that. So now let's get into the juicy part. What is all this buzz about a TikTok ban? I want to start with the main point. We should all know by now that social media or any online interaction you have, period, collects data whether it's to figure out how to better serve you ads, get you to revisit a certain website, understand what content to put in front of you to make sure that you keep coming back for more. Data is being collected all the time and being used in more ways that I can articulate. 
or explain in this short podcast episode. Now, we know that this is happening for basically all social media apps, right? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. But the problem is that TikTok in particular is owned by a Chinese company named ByteDance. And under China's national intelligence law passed in 2017, it could be subject to handing over user data, which is why U.S. politicians have claimed that it can be a threat to national security. Now, TikTok has completely denied any of these allegations or denied that they would willingly hand over this data in multiple occasions, and they've also stated that the data that they have on American users is solely stored on American soil or Singapore soil and is not subject to the Chinese government. But the question that I'm dying to know is what happens if the Chinese government requests this data and they have this national intelligence law in place? TikTok has said that they wouldn't hand it over, But how exactly would that work? So on March 23rd, 2023, a couple of weeks ago, the CEO of TikTok, Xiao Zichou Chu, testified before Congress. And I think that he handled the questions that were being thrown at him rather well. But it was concerning to me the questions that Congress was asking. Their questions not only demonstrated to me their lack of technical competence, but also their lack of intention. And let me be clear, when I say lack of technical competence, I wasn't expecting their questions to be PhD level, but I would have expected them at the very least to be user level. A couple of minutes on TikTok, 20 to 30, let's say, and a little bit of Googling can sometimes go a long way. What we got instead was a slurry of questions that made no sense, and really, in my opinion, didn't address the main point of concern. They were asking questions about eyes being scanned for dilation, underage social media usage, Wi-Fi connection, which could all be good points. But if they were only to apply to TikTok, the questions they were asking apply to the entire social media industry Hence, in my opinion, should have been addressed separately. The sole point, in my opinion, that needed to be addressed in this hearing is, okay, it's very simple. TikTok is owned by a Chinese company. And though they have assured us that American user data only lives on American or Singapore soil, what agreements are in place that would allow TikTok to supersede China's national intelligence law, which requires, by the way, organizations and citizens to assist the country's intelligence agencies in gathering information if requested. That is what this is all about. While collecting user data and privacy policies are a valid concern, that is something that applies to all social media apps and really the internet in general, and not just TikTok it needs to be addressed separately. So the questions asked should have been revolving around TikTok's Chinese ownership and feasible solutions to ensure that American user data would not be shared. And the only solution should not just be, you have to sell this company to an American company. If that does end up happening, great, but we are far too advanced of a species to only be able to come up with one possible solution. So in my eyes, We have two bills that need to be drafted up. And keep in mind, I'm not a politician, so don't judge me. But being, if you've seen the congressional hearing, I might as well be. Anyways, the first bill would be the handling of user data when a foreign entity owns the company being operated in the U.S. So this would be the scenario of what we're facing with TikTok and any other scenario that may arise after Number two would be the handling of user data, underage usage, and all the other valid concerns that accompany the social media industry. This is my little spiel on the TikTok ban. It's been happening 
or looming for a while now. And I personally just don't think that the questions, the correct questions and the right energy is being put into this. I think that there is valid concern, sure, but I don't think that it's being addressed in the way that it needs to be. They're kind of trying to dump all the issues of social media into this one app. And it's not TikTok that has created this entire social media frenzy. They are a participant, but the main point of concern for them is the fact that they are owned by a Chinese company and under that intelligence law could be subject to handing over user data. And during this hearing, not one time did I hear this concern be brought up. That's kind of where my concern is. Anyways, I hope this gives you guys a little bit of insight into this crazy TikTok ban mess. And I am also curious to know what you think. So leave a comment telling me your opinion and make sure you stay tuned next week for another episode. Talk to you guys later.